Hello everyone and uh, welcome to Arctic Retro. Today I have this uh, sorry looking WIC 20 on my bench. And by sorry looking, I uh, simply mean that it's a bit dirty and uh, yellow, but otherwise it looks uh, to be in good shape. I got this machine from a guy locally uh, to take a look at. He does know if it's working. It's been stored away for uh, 30 years and he was uh, suddenly interested in getting it to work. <laughs> Hopefully it's working, but uh, I'm not going to power it up. I'm going to open it first just to take a look inside. And as usual, these have uh, only three screws in the case. So I don't do uh, professional repair work actually for others, but uh, sometimes I can uh, do it if I feel I'm uh, competent enough to to do it and it's an easy fix the owner of this machine couldn't test it because he has lost the, the power supply so uh, yeah all right so uh, this actually looks very nice inside not much uh, dirt or dust or anything actually well a little bit there is always <laughs> the few electrolyte capacitors that uh, is on this board looks uh, fine so i think it's safe to power this on and i'm gonna do it now and i'm gonna use my modern keylog power supply that uh, is for the commodore 64 but of course it also fits uh, this machine and uh, also i have a a VIC-20 video cable that uh, provides uh, a composite video to, uh, to my TV. So no need to hook up uh, the modulator and things like that. All right, let's see, does it work? Yes, in fact it does, great. <laughs> As usual, a little bit of uh, bad uh, picture quality, but I think this looks uh, very nice. Let's test the keyboard. Yeah, works just fine. All right, so now I'm gonna run a diagnostics testing on this one and uh, check that everything is uh, okay. If you have followed my channel for a while, you maybe remember when I built um, Diagnostics harness and uh, this uh, hyper expander with the diagnostics cartridge installed and uh, I'm gonna use that now So now everything is uh, hooked up except for uh, the keyboard dongle. I don't uh, need to test that. I uh, know it's working All right, let's see The cartridge is working because it gives you extra commands on the F keys. To run the diagnostics cartridge, I actually need to open the cartridge and uh, uh, switch uh, uh, jumpers to select another uh, memory bank. So now it's running a little uh, RAM test here and uh, seems to be okay. Uh, yeah, results is okay. Then I'm going to run uh, the VIC-20 Diagnostics. ROM check F5 bad. <laughs> Alright, so there is uh, obviously something wrong with uh, the ROM, uh, maybe? No, it says uh, 9E bad. Unfortunately, since the ROM check uh, is uh, failing, uh, the rest of uh, the diagnostics test uh, just stops. So uh, I'm not able to test the different um, ports. And uh, 
But uh, anyway, I'm just gonna test out this machine. There might be some obscure error in uh, the kernel ROM or something. That can be something that's not in use very much or anything like that. You never know. The machine seems to be working fine. It runs basic programs and uh, yeah, I'm gonna test this uh, cartridge game, Omega Race. Let's see if it runs that one. And then we need to hook up the joystick. The WIC-20 just has one joystick port while the Commodore 64 has two. All right, seems to work. <laughs> it's very quick. <laughs> you need a good reaction for this. Hey. <laughs> Next, I'm gonna test if the hard drive, uh, no, sorry, the floppy disk routines are working. I'm gonna use this SD to IEC adapter and uh, see if we can uh, load some um, some games from floppy. So seems like Shift needs a bit of a press. <laughs> Eight. Uh, <laughs> all right, I need, obviously, I need to <laughs> power up the SD to IEC. Just forgot. Oops. Come on. Device not present. Well, all right, so it seems that you have to wait a bit. Uh, I haven't really used this very much, but. Uh, you obviously have to wait a while for uh, the SD to IEC to initialize and no, it is actually loading. But I realize now that, that this um, memory card is set up for the Pi 1541, uh, so I'm gonna switch to that. But at least it works, but uh, I can't uh, really access the files. Instead I'm hooking up a Pi 1541 device. Uh, which is uh, much better with regards to compatibility uh, with the 1541 a floppy drive. And this one runs uh, on a Raspberry Pi and uh, has an HDMI output, so you can actually hook it up to another monitor to see what's happening. <laughs> All right, uh, <coughs> the Pi uh, should have booted now. And if you list the directory, you only get the different file browsers for the different versions of machines. So this is the WIC20. I'm gonna load the file browser for WIC20, FB20. I'm gonna run that. So now you can browse uh, different directories on the memory card and uh, I have a VIC-20 uh, folder here. There's different things here. Let's try uh, this one. Bouncing Ball 2 should be a demo, I think. <laughs> so I went back. All right, this is an annihilator. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> oh, this is a great game. <laughs> I don't think I have uh, tested it before. Uh, you know, the Vic 20 without uh, any memory extensions is uh, quite limited and uh, not many good games, but. Uh, this was uh, kind of cool. <laughs> now let's try this uh, demo. 
this one I have tried before. Psychedelic. <laughs> <laughs> so that was it. <laughs> Here's breakout. Oh. <laughs> this is probably a basic program. Um, judging by the flickering and the speed of things but it's a good one. All right, so uh, my conclusion is, I made a programming error. <laughs> my conclusion is that this machine is working just fine. I haven't tested the loading from tape, but uh, I don't think that's uh, necessary. So for the owner of this machine, it's usable and uh, no need to repair anything. Even though the diagnostics uh, test failed, uh, could be uh, many things, uh, but the machine is working. Just gonna fix the error and then... <laughs> anyway, then this machine is uh, ready for some uh, cleaning and maybe a couple of new capacitors and... Uh, keyboard maintenance. Uh, we'll see what the owner wants me to do. Alrighty, so um, the owner of the machine uh, just uh, confirmed that he wants a full restoration including a recapping and a new power supply and a SD2IC. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, do that now. I just start with the uh, cleaning and of course um, <laughs> the power supply and SD2IC I have to uh, order so uh, that will take a bit of time but uh, in the meantime there's uh, stuff to do just gonna remove uh, the motherboard and uh, clean the case there's a few screws here but they are all uh, the same uh, kind so uh, no need to take special care on that So there we go, and uh, unlike Adrian in the digital basement, I like to keep those. I want the machine to be original. <laughs> I'm also gonna remove the keyboard because I'm gonna open it and clean it up. Some of the keys were a little bit um, uh, bad, so uh, yeah, a little bit of cleaning on uh, the inside of the uh, keyboard uh, PCB should improve it at least a little bit all right now this is ready to be um, to be cleaned and uh, a little bit of uh, retro brighting after that The keyboard is uh, not very dirty, there is some dust and uh, yeah, dirt as usual, uh, but I'm gonna remove all the keycaps uh, anyway just to clean everything uh, really good. And also uh, the yellowing on uh, the lettering is also a little bit uh, noticeable, so uh, that can be fixed too. All right, let's do a little quick uh, speed up uh, removal of keycaps.
that was the keys uh, except the space bar and as you can see there is a considerable amount of uh, dust and dirt mm, yummy and uh, the space bar is a little bit uh, different you have to remove it a little bit more careful because it has this uh, oops it has the spring but uh, uh, the spring is a little bit uh, uh, larger and it also has this uh, met metal bar the springs they look for the most part okay but there are some with uh, rust uh, like this one here uh, you can see there's uh, rust so i'm gonna soak uh, the springs into some vinegar for uh, yeah maybe one hour and i use this uh, kind of vinegar that's made for uh, cleaning not for uh, cooking regular white cleaning vinegar all right so now you can clearly see uh, the reaction it's a little bit of a glare but uh, you see all the bubbles <laughs> working its way through the corrosion for this i just use uh, warm water and uh, regular dish washing soap and I let uh, the keys uh, just soak in that for uh, 15 minutes all right now uh, every key is um, clean I uh, also cleaned every individual key cap with a cloth and uh, yeah now I let them dry the springs turned out very nice I just rinse them and uh, then sprayed a little uh, WD-40 um, which I uh, afterwards dried off so uh, looking uh, shiny as new <laughs> and the keyboard plate I have vacuumed it and uh, now I'm just gonna clean a little bit with some uh, IPA to remove some of the remaining uh, dirt Since some of the keys were a little bit unresponsive, I'm gonna remove uh, the back plate and uh, there's a bunch of uh, small screws. Um, luckily I got this little uh, screwdriver, electric. The shift lock key is uh, soldered onto the board so you need to desolder that one and a good idea to be very quick with the heat because uh, it can melt the plastic in the key what one more screw now there it is so these are just uh, uh, metal pads uh, so there is no carbon in these as I can see uh, some of the keyboards have some carbon uh, pads uh, that can be damaged if you uh, clean them but uh, these are just copper so I'm gonna use a little bit of electronic cleaner and wipe over the board There's a little bit of dust, so uh, yeah, needs a little bit of a cleaning. Then I'm taking all of these uh, keyboard uh, plungers that contains uh, the rubber contacts and clean it in some uh, uh, hot water. While I'm waiting for the keyboard parts to dry, uh, which takes about one day, I'm going to clean up the board and uh, not that it's very dirty or anything but um, there's some dust and um, always some um, oxidation so I just clean it with uh, alcohol and um, yeah it's good to go over the whole surface just to make sure everything is nice and clean <laughs> especially around the, the porch there are uh, some dust and dirt as you can see already I have seen some uh, actually 
r rinse the whole board uh, or clean it in uh, in soapy water and then uh, just um, rinse it off and dry it but uh, I'm not really into that. I don't think uh, water is uh, very good for uh, electronics. It can perhaps come into small uh, gaps in the legs of the CPU and create problems uh, further down the line. So, but maybe I'm wrong. The backside of the motherboard is uh, just spotless, so no need to do anything there. And here we see assembly number 250403 and uh, copyright 1982 and the revision D. The edge uh, contacts for uh, the user port and the cassette are just, uh, yeah, brush up a little bit with this fiberglass pen and uh, yeah, you can see how shiny they get. <laughs> So they look like brand new now. Finally, a little electronic cleaner in uh, each of the contacts. And the power switch also needs a little uh, electronic cleaner, I think. It's time to do a little bit of uh, retro writing and I'll start with the keycaps and uh, it might be hard to see on the video but uh, the writing on the keycaps is uh, noticeably yellow and uh, but the writing on the sides are quite white still so I'm gonna apply a little bit of uh, retro writing on the top only. For retrobriting I just use a little bit of 12% um, uh, hydrogen peroxide cream and I just apply a little bit onto the letters. I have actually tried and retrobriting the whole key on these um, brown keys. However, one time they actually got white because of, uh, of that. So uh, I'm trying not to use too much and only on the letter. So then I just wrap it in some uh, plastic film and uh, yeah, put it out in the sun. The case I already had out in the sun for uh, some hours without any hydrogen peroxide and uh, Maybe it's already a little bit um, uh, whiter, but uh, to speed it up, I'm gonna just add a little hydrogen peroxide cream and put it out again. Just a thin layer and uh, try to get it as even uh, spread out as possible. Then it's out in the sun and it's a cold um, early May spring day here, about uh, 7 uh, degrees Celsius. And I just massage a little bit around now and then, leave it there for a couple of hours, then we'll see. The retrobriting is uh, done and I am cleaning off the cream and uh, will you look at that? <laughs> I think this is a... Uh, almost perfect result. While waiting for the retro brighting to be finished I have time to do the recapping and uh, these are the caps for the revision D. There's only six of them and uh, yeah quite common values so I uh, got them all here. So I'm hitting up the desoldering station and uh, time to do the recapping. Uh, hopefully this is not too boring. I have a uh, done a lot of recapping uh, lately and also on the VIC-20 but uh, hopefully there's some value in it. <laughs> so uh, this is quite straightforward, I'm not gonna show everything, just uh, the start and the finish I guess.
So I'm gonna start with this uh, big one, 2200 microfarad, and uh, why do we replace uh, these old capacitors if they're working? Well, it's because they can start to fail when they're like 30 years old or more. Uh, they can start leaking, they can dry out, and they can gradually change their electrical uh, characteristics. So uh, it's better to be safe than sorry, and it's uh, not a lot of work and it's uh, quite cheap. These caps cost almost nothing. So the first one came loose quite easily and now it's important to find the correct polarity. This one points to the negative side and uh, yeah there's a plus there so it's uh, this way. Use a little bit of flux. That was the first one and uh, yeah, went smooth. Just do a little bit of cleaning with some uh, IPA and we're good to go over to the next one. <laughs> so I'll report back if there's any issues. <laughs> Last cap goes in, and this is a 10 microfarad, a small one. And I do clean up the pads before I uh, solder, but I didn't film that. <laughs> Alrighty, that was the recapping. It went smooth. Uh, yeah. Brand new electrolytes. Uh, next thing I want to do on this uh, board is to add a few uh, heat sinks. So I'm adding one to the wick chip and uh, one to the CPU. Not the largest heatsink, but uh, it's something at least. <laughs> I just want to test if I uh, did it correctly or if I screwed up. So I'm uh, just turning it on now. Okay, seems to be working. <laughs> nice. Actually, if you put the capacitors the wrong polarity, they might uh, blow up. <laughs> While I have uh, the board uh, connected, I'm gonna adjust a little bit of this uh, adjustment uh, capacitor. And you can use it to, uh, to uh, fine tune uh, the um, video circuit, maybe get a better picture. Well. No, I'm adjusting the other one, uh, which I think is an uh, adjustable resistor, but I'm not really sure. The white one down here. Yeah, I think that's as good as it gets uh, on this computer. And also filming the screen is uh, of course a problem. You don't see the same as I see. You get those artifacts from uh, filming uh, the TV. Well, 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 look at this. Um, an amazing result of the retro writing. The case looks like brand new. <laughs> so I'm pretty pleased with that. Well, it's time to um, assemble the machine now. Everything is uh, completed. So uh, I'm gonna do that quickly now.
All right, that was the keyboard and uh, my oh my look at this beauty <laughs> Looks like brand new actually <laughs> The restoration is uh, completed. Uh, let's test and see how the keyboard is uh, working now I had problem with uh, the dollar sign but of course no the <laughs> different key plungers have moved and uh, shifted but everything feels uh, perfect I don't need to use any force at all <laughs> so this is a nice result all right time to play a little Donkey Kong Oops. <laughs> I love uh, the VIC-20 and I always like to uh, do some restoration works on that machine. Anyway, that was it for this video. Hope you enjoyed the content and uh, hope to see you again. And uh, thanks a lot to my patrons for the support. See you next time. Bye bye.